Welcome back, everyone. We're here today with our final show of the week. This is our Cabral House Call uh, debuting on Sunday, getting into our community's questions, as always. Looking forward to seeing the questions that are popping up right now as I am opening up the giant Ask Cabral document. Uh, again, once again, I always like to take this time to thank you so much for being a part of this community. Uh, it really, truly is amazing to see how it's grown over the years. I was just chatting with... Um, an amazing team member of mine, Rachel. And uh, for anybody who is actually a part of my uh, Boston practice, I know that we're a global virtual functional medicine practice now, but uh, back in the day, we actually had office-based locations in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, love Boston, always have, always will. And um, Rachel was the office manager there and um, just, again, a truly amazing, amazing person. And uh, we were just kind of reminiscing just for a minute or so really how far we've come. I mean, really, it's it's absolutely amazing. And I I always tell people, like, I've always been the same person. I really have. Like, I've, I've, I've always been this same person, hoping to evolve, and, and I hope that I have, uh, into a, you know, a better, kinder individual uh, as I moved through my illness many, many years ago. But it, it is, I, and the reason why I say I have not really changed is I continue to teach every single day. It's always what I've done. Continue to try to help people every single day. Uh, initially, it was nutrition and fitness and then strength and conditioning. And then, yes, uh, naturopathy and functional medicine. But it is the strength of our team and the amount that they care, people like Rachel, that have allowed us to get to where we are today. I mean, that, that's the bottom line. We have a team of 60 or so people, probably more, with the IHP team uh, led by Caitlin, with the Cabral Wellness team led by Michael, uh, with the uh, Equal Life team where we have a, an executive team of, of a dozen people and just like absolutely just fantastic people. But it's also our community, right? I mean, I didn't create this community. I think I, I started and shared a sp specific cause, a mission. This is who we are. This is what we believe in. This is what we want to do. We want to help you heal yourself, and then we want you to go and heal others. That, that's our mission at IHP. That's the bottom line. That's, that's the way that it works. There's no way I can reach the amount of people that I want to reach. It's just not. And it's not my words. It's not my necessarily even teachings. I'm synthesizing thousands of years of knowledge from Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine, bioregulatory medicine, functional medicine, naturopathy, and so much more. And in thousands of books that other people have, have written, I've just read them, and then decades of practice and put it all together. But it's truly... Uh, an amazing community to see now 18, 19,000 people just organically together in a Facebook group at cabralsupportgroup.com, sharing wins, sharing struggles, asking questions, giving advice. IHP now with about 5,000 practitioners all around the world. Uh, again, it's just been it's just been fantastic. It really has. So, uh, just again, I appreciate this community. I don't know what else I would do. I'd still be doing the same exact thing. There'd just be nobody listing. So, so once again, thank you so much. All right, let's get into your questions now. Uh, let's see. The first one is from Christy. Uh, and again, if you want to read along, you can go to stephencabral.com forward slash two four zero three. All right, Christy says what. Do we know in the nat in natural health about functional dyspepsia? I just had an upper endoscopy to diagnose the cause of a burning sensation in my stomach just under my right rib cage, usually after eating, while eating, that seems to respond to an amount of food rather than any particular food. Before this, the gastro had me do a stool test that was negative for H. pylori. They took biopsies during the upper endo, but the doctor says he doesn't expect to find anything. He said he saw irritation in the stomach lining. and it was probably caused by functional dyspepsia, which was an imbalance of acid in the stomach. He said said the cause of this could be different things, including stress, which I admittedly have a lot of, but I do my best to control it. And otherwise, there are reasons unknown. But that I could just take Pepsid for how long? Oh, forever. Needless to say, I'm not doing that. So if all I know is that the acid is imbalanced, how do I balance it? My diet, exercise, and supplement regimen are all along the lines of what you advise. So none of the other causes of this dysfunction. And said use fried or unhealthy fatty foods, alcohol excess, makes sense. Thank you. Okay, so 
Christy, the, the absolute, I mean, I totally understand what you're saying, but the absolute best thing that you can do, which is really, really important, is to actually find out what works for your body and what is actually going on. And I know that's not the answer that you want to hear, but um, so I'll give you I'll give you a bunch of different places to get started so that you'll be able to find your answer. So first things first, I have a full in-depth course, course on all things digestion, acid reflux, um, indigestion, candida, bacterial overgrowth, H. pylori, parasites, constipation, uh, loose stool, you name it. That's at stephencabral.com forward slash courses. All right, so that's one option. The second is that you uh, run the candida metabolic and vitamins test and the three-day bacteria and parasite test. It goes beyond H. pylori and it actually looks at what are the imbalances potentially in the digestive system. All right, the next one is you do neither of those, and you actually do a rotation-based diet. So go to, well, I would ask, go to cabralsupportgroup.com, our amazing community that we talked about, and um, the amazing Michelle will ask, will, will share with you if you ask, hey, what, what's the podcast on the rotation diet that Dr. Cabral talked about? And then you'll begin a rotation diet for you. And the rotation diet will then find out which meals cause you the most digestive issues, right? Inflammation functional dyspepsia, which is just a name for imbalance, right? Like acids in the stomach, that's all. Imbalanced inflammation. So then, then you'll be able to say, oh, it's these particular foods or food groups. And then you'll be able to work with a health coach and say, why these foods? Oh, are they too acidic? Are they too high in this, that, or the other thing? And you'll be able to figure it out. So again, like it, it all works together, but that is exactly how you'd figure it out if there's no ulcer, Okay. If there's no H. pylori, if there's no um, entanglement of the fascia, if there's no uh, blockages or inflammation in what's called the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine that the stomach empties into, because you can't, you're not probably not checking that with your uh, endoscopy. It said it was an upper endo, you know, so I don't know that they went down into the gastric parts of the stomach. Uh, so all these things are super common, but I would also potentially, again, I'm not telling you to do this because I can't give you any right on this show, no medical advice, medical diagnosis, no medical treatment plans, no medical cures. But you might want to look into a product like Healthy Belly along with uh, Healthy Gut Support and using those for four to eight weeks. Uh, something to look into. You may want to, yeah, I just, I don't want to give you too many recommendations and without you starting to learn more about what foods affect what, because then you can get the answer out of that. You can find, oh, this is when it happens and why. Because it might not be a particular food. It might be like, oh, this food's fine one day and not another day. Okay, well, is it then lunch digestion? Is it dinner digestion? Or is it really stress? Because stress can induce a lot of these things. And then could be a histamine issue. So a lot of different paths to go down, but there's no doubt about it that you'll be able to figure this out. No doubt about it. All right. Thank you, Christy, for writing in and, and keep us updated. Next uh, question is, oh, this says Christy as well. All right. What's Christy's next question? This is an add-on to my previous question about functional dyspepsia. Another strange detail. I can feel the spot on my stomach that burns after eating during certain abdominal exercises. It's not pain, but I can feel it like it's an internal healing injury while doing the exercise. I can feel it almost like it's an internal healing injury while doing the exercise. Yeah, I mean, if that's the case, there very well could be, and most likely is, inflammation in that particular spot. And I know that they said there was not an ulcer, but there are obviously levels before it can become an ulcer. So uh, one of the things that we do is, again, I can't give you any medical advice, but um, cabbage juice is one of those things. You can look up my podcast and just go to stevencabral.com forward slash podcast, type in ulcer, type in cabbage juice. Um, you'll be able to see how that can be very, very helpful for some people. Same with aloe vera, same with the healthy gut support, same with the healthy belly. So I'd start to look into these things and I'd see if it's in your stomach or if it's in that first part of the small intestine because there's also something called duodenal ulcers. Uh, or duodenum ulcers. And that's an ulcer that's right outside of the stomach in the first part of the small intestine. And that can also be not just because of the uh, inflammation in the small intestine, but because there's not enough bile being produced because there's a dysfunction in the liver and gallbladder. So these are all things to look into. Again, this is not a silver bullet approach. True health issues, uh, as I always say, are nuanced. 
All right, Jillian's up next. Jillian says, hi, Dr. Paul. I have a question regarding research on SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome. I recently heard that Australian researchers had found a blood marker that could indicate the potential for SIDS. They noticed a significantly lower enzyme level of BCHE, which impacts an infant's ability to wake out of a deep sleep in the infants who died from SIDS. I also read that high levels of alpha fetoprotein in mothers can be an indicator for potential SIDS. Lastly, I've read that infants that died from SIDS also had higher levels of serotonin. With your knowledge, do any of these reasons seem connected? Are there things that a mother can do before and while pregnant to help her infant have a decreased risk based on the research? I know that alpha fetoprotein is an issue of the liver. Are there ways that mothers can support their livers during pregnancy? Thank you for all you do, Jillian. All right, Jillian, uh, appreciate the question. And this is a very sensitive issue. Um, I do not believe, uh, again, this is not, this is just an opinion. So I want to share with you my opinion, though. I have two daughters. Uh, I have um, an amazing amount of nieces and nephews, like, 12 <laughs> right now. I have lots of children uh, in our practice, our, our functional medicine practice. So I just want to be sensitive of this issue. I don't think there is a single reason that causes SIDS. Just like I don't think, and I know from the research, that there's no one single thing that causes autism. I do believe that it is multifactorial and that there are Issues, not with the not waking up, because that was that was in there, and I'm sure you didn't necessarily mean that, meaning um, it's not that. It's that there is a, a shutting down of, of the, the systems of, of a young, young infant. And what we need to look at is what's the causal factor for that? It almost always goes back to the rain barrel effect. So in autism, we know it's the rain barrel effect. We know that autism is caused by multiple things, which I'm not going to get into right now because honestly, some of them are, are controversial. And when you start talking on those topics, uh, uh, people just shut down. They, they, can't, uh, they, they can't keep an open mind to it. And my, my job is not to create divisions in the industry, uh, but to simply say, hey, why don't you, you know, just like, let's all keep our minds open and let's just say we don't have to necessarily believe but let's think about all the different options. And I, I think that you're exploring that right here. And I think that that's good. But I don't think that, I don't think that this is the end all be all. I really don't. Uh, I really don't. And so when we look at neurotransmitters, such as uh, a serotonin, or even something such as a dopamine, that these can be affected by gut bacteria as well. I think we need to start really looking at what is going on with the gut and the microbiome and how it affects the overall nervous system and, uh, and toxicity levels of the baby and what the mother, what uh, may have been a factor in the mother during pregnancy and then, and then afterwards as well. And some of it can be heavy metals and some of it can be gut-based issues and then there can be other uh, toxins uh, introduced as well that could be an issue. So I have to keep it at that because I can't give you a definitive answer and whenever I can't give you a definitive answer, I want you to know uh, that that I'm not right that that this is not something that I think has been solved yet But again, we should keep our minds open continue to read and I'll do my best to continue updated updating you as well All right, Janet's up next Janet says greetings. Would you recommend? Uh, and by the way, Jillian just one other thing how I work with women Ideally before they get pregnant um, You listen to my show how to have a happy and healthy pregnancy We go through full detox protocols eliminate heavy metals eliminate environmental toxins, balance hormones, balance cortisol. Uh, that, I mean, that's what we do. Clean, get the body to a clean slate, balance the gut microbiome. All right, Janet's up next. Greetings, would you recommend an IV NAD, single injection or a series of six? Thank you for spreading your knowledge. I wish everyone would listen. Thank you, Janet, appreciate that. So my overall philosophy on intravenous uh, liquids with nutrients behind them, such as NAD, um, is that I'm not against them, but I don't recommend them long term. Here's why. This this is why. I don't believe in mega dosing nutritional supplements. I don't. I believe in nutritional supplements. It's one of the ways I got well. I w I'll tell you right now. I would not have gotten well if I had not used nutritional supplements. There's no humanly way possible because my digestive system, and my nervous system, and my immune system was so unbalanced that I needed to give it a push 
in a direction that I couldn't do through food alone. And I know I, I wanted to solve it through food alone too, and I tried. It just wasn't happening because I couldn't get the dosage that I needed. You can't extract it from food to that degree. You just can't. But here's the thing. I use whole food. It's part of my de-stress protocol, right? Diet, exercise, stress reduction, tox removal, rest, emotional balance, scientifically backed supplements, and a success mindset. That's what I used to get myself well. Then I refined it, refined it, refined it, kept refining it, used it in private practice, kept refining it, and kept doing that year after year until I developed a practice that was completely word of mouth, and we saw a quarter of a million people and continuing on to this day. So, okay, do I believe in intravenous um, uh, an IV drip or um, a, a series of pushes, injections. Not really. I really don't. However, I'm not against it. Someone's feeling run down. They want to do a Myers cocktail. Not against it. I'm not against it. Someone's um, low in B12. They want to do B12 instead of just the um, uh, supplements for right now. Not against it. But you're talking about mega doses. And the body is not used to, nor really can it facilitate a mega dose of something? So, um, and by the way, like you might see in the back of a, like I've got, I, this is my DNS packet for later today, um, but um, on this. So you might see something like B12, oh, it's 10,000% of the, uh, you know, the the RDA or like the, the like what you need. Yeah, but that's only to prevent disease. That's not optimal. So when you look at this, you're like, oh, B12 is at 240 micrograms. Well, Keep in mind, when I was doing B12 back in the day, we're talking about 100,000 micrograms you would get from like an injection, like a massive amount. So it's, it's just totally night and day. So, okay, um, would I do NAD? No, I wouldn't. I, I would use it initially if you needed to, to bring your levels up. All right, that's been shown to work, no doubt about it. But then after that, I would just supplement something like I do, which is called Cell Boost. That is the synergistic effect. It is the NMN, which leads to NAD, transresveratrol, quercetin, PQQ. So I like lower dose synergies, less chance of toxicity, and it's how the body is meant to work on a daily basis. All right, that was a long answer, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that's helpful. Anonymous is up next. Uh, this person says, hello, doc. Thank you for your endless and genuine care for the health of everybody. Well, thank you, Anonymous. Appreciate that. I know there was no diagnosis, treating, or curing disease in your practice, but a few months ago, I had floor carpets and carpets ripped up in my house, which I'm sure put a bunch of allergens in the air. I work in a steel shop that has pollutants and air tints as well. The ear, nose, and throat doctor sent me for a CT scan to look at my nasal cavities, which were full of pus, hindering my smell and taste. I can't breathe clear for the most part. I can breathe clear for the most part, but... I blow my nose all the time, sometimes sneeze four or five times in a row. From the inflammation, it's all water. I'm getting nasal drip all day, and I'm sure I'm when I'm sleeping too, which I believe will cause bacteria in my gut. I was given two weeks of antibiotics, which helped a little to clear it up to get the smell and taste back, but it's now it's going away again. I don't want the shots they recommended putting me more antibiotics in me, seeing I'm working on majorly my health. Do you have experience in this practice with sinus problems? Uh, am I too far gone to just take a mold lab test? Okay, I get it. I totally understand. Okay, so you can do a mold test or not do a mold test. Um, the problem is, and this is so wild that I don't know, I, and I know that medical doctors are only taught this and they're not doing anything to hurt you, but if you take antibiotics for a sinus-based infection, it is almost a 100% recurrence rate in the future of a sinus infection based on bacterial imbalances in the nasal passages. Your nasal passages, just like your mouth, all the way down through your intestines. Okay, that's your ear, nose, throat, intestines. That's your entire tract. That's meant to be the outside of your body. It means you're not supposed to let the bad things in. It's protective. It has a mucosal layer. Along with it is bacteria. That bacteria needs to become balanced. If not, yeast begins to grow. I had yeast overgrowth, candida overgrowth in my nasal passages and mold as well. You have to understand is bacteria is not going to touch that. That's why it can help, but then things become imbalanced because now candida has also taken up shop. Um, this is, again, like you just said in your own notice, uh, I can't give you medical advice. So what I do personally and would do is I would use a neti pot. And with that, I would use two to three drops of the um, citricidal drops or whatever you choose to as something to kill some of the bacteria and yeast in the nasal passages. I would do that twice a day. Um, 
And then you could do the Nasa Court by Nutribiotics nasal spray once or twice a day. If that's too strong for your nasal passages as you breathe it in, you might just do one squirt to start. Or you might do something like a colloidal silver in the beginning, a nasal spray. That would be fine. You can choose to do that. Then if you can't afford to do the lab testing, I totally understand. You might just begin with the CBO protocol with the citricidal drops used as directed. So... Um, again, that's a place to get started. And then, of course, make sure that you're using air filters in your home. I consider air filters to be as important as water filters. And you can check out all my recommendations for all these amazing companies at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. All right, last question of the day is from Julia. Julia says, hi, my husband diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Can you please tell me what you know about it and what we can do about it? Sure, happy to help. So I have about 40 free podcasts on all things thyroid, and 95% of them are on low thyroid. Hashimoto's is low thyroid combined with autoimmune. I've talked about Hashimoto's so, so much, and I'm sure, Julie, you're just new to this community. We welcome you to the community. We appreciate you. So here's what you can do. Um, There's two ways to do this. One, you're going to... Uh, take your time and just absorb the information. And you just go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts and you scroll through the images at the top on desktop or mobile. You'll find one that says thyroid, all right? So then just click on that. Thyroid, I think it's thyroid solutions it's called. Click on that, scroll to the bottom, start from the beginning, listen to all the thyroid-based podcasts. Believe me, you will know what to do in order to rebalance your thyroid, okay? Um, Next... Uh, If you wanted to short track that and condense all of the podcast listening to about four hours and get a complete A to Z of what we do in our practice, you can go to stephencabral.com forward slash courses. I have a course course on thyroid, a course on female hormones, a course on digestion. Those are all... um, investment-based courses, and then I have free courses on detox, and then uh, fat loss that he comes with our weight loss-based system. So uh, your choice, obviously, completely go about it how you want. And then, of course, if you want a personalized plan, um, you can do the big five, or you might just want to run the stress mood and metabolism test. Uh, But anytime there's an autoimmune issue, I I automatically say, hey, let's look at the gut as well. So you can do that through an integrative health practitioner level two, your local naturopathic doctor, or us over at Equal Life, of course, your choice. But I'm telling you right now, you do any one of those three, you're going to be able to figure it out. There's no doubt about it. Everything is figure outable. And, uh, and Julia, I know you'll get your question answered as well. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Appreciate you. I'll be back tomorrow with our Mindset and Motivation Monday. Don't miss it. Take care. <laughs>